Hello, it's now the next day and for the purposes of continuity, I'm wearing exactly the same stuff as I did yesterday, not because I'm grubby. I've done some uh, actual work this morning on customers' cars, but now they've all gone and I'm on this, uh, trying to get it ready so I can actually drive it home because I'm going to an England under 21s football game tonight and I quite like to take that, which is risky because it might not work. So. The first thing I'm going to do, I've hooked a laptop up and at the moment it's refusing to talk to the car, which is a fantastic start. In the meantime, I've got a funnel in the engine bay here. That's not just a random accessory, that's plugged into the gearbox. And what I'm going to do, because as I said, the gearbox filler is the drain plug with a big tube on it. So this is, the, uh, this is actually the oil level plug for the C6. It goes in upside down, so it goes underneath the gearbox. But the level in the gearbox, once it gets above this, the height of this tube, it starts to spill out the hole in the middle. So the idea is you fill the gearbox up through the filler at the top, and then when it starts to dribble back out of this, you know you're at the right level. But you have to wait for a certain sequence of drips. You can't just guess. Only that is exactly what you have to do. When the engine is running and when it's all up temperature and everything like that, it isn't running at the moment it isn't up to temperature but there's no oil in it I mean I've probably got five litres out of that gearbox it takes seven I don't want to run it too long with hardly any oil in it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it in here while it's cold until why is the fuel pump running um, I'm going to fill it uh, here until it comes out the bottom while the engine's off that won't be the right level but it will give me something as soon as I start the engine believe it, when you start the engine the pump runs in the gearbox and the oil level drops. So it's more likely to leak when you haven't got the engine running. So I'll put enough in that it spills without the engine running and then I'll start the engine and then I'll top it up further until it does leak back out and then uh, cycle the gears. And hopefully reset the gearbox's brain using the computer um, because it's an auto adaptive gearbox. It remembers how you drive, but also it remembers what the resistance is on the solenoids apparently. Um, in order that it can time its gear changes right and of course the old solenoids weren't working properly I mean there's every chance that these solenoids don't work properly either but I'm going to be positive for once so first thing to do a bit of oil in here start the engine up a bit more oil until we've got the right amount of oil in it Just do the reset oh no should I do the reset first I'll figure it out right so this is the special oil JWS3309 so I'm just going to put, I can put all of this in there because this is only a two litre, I think. Is it only two litre? Oh, it's four litre. And when you do the partial drain, you normally get about three litres out. Well, I reckon I've got about four or five out because I've taken the valve block off and blown it out with air and it really needed to change them. Although it was looking more red rather than black than I noticed last time I did it. So the flushes are doing something at least. I've got a bucket underneath. I don't know how much was in here, probably about two litres. And always that last little bit, you can't get out. Right, so that's going down. Now I shall now go and check on the laptop and see if it has actually found the car. It's a good thing I can speak French. Oh no, I can't, that's right. Uh, this is the one I'm gonna need. This is the gearbox here, I think. Um, so I'm going to click on that in a minute and try and get into it. Oh, it's found many faults, look. Joy. So I'm going to try and get into that in a minute and uh, reset what I need to reset. But at the moment, it's just going through all the systems, checking everything, seeing what's wrong with it. This is the type of ECU it's got, or the spec. That's the number of faults it's found. Ten with the injection. Good. Um, yeah. So hopefully something meaningful will come out of that. There's still no oil coming out of here. So I need to keep putting it in. Success. Or not, because I'm wasting new oil. Right, I can start the engine now at least. Still gives me a nice warm feeling seeing that. I am in the Boite de Vitesses, which I think is box of speeds. I did just, oh, no, hang on, I think I've done it already. I did a, re I did a reset thing just now when some solenoids clicked. Oh, I think I've done it. Uh, to make this effective, make sure the vehicle is configured in the following condition. Engine off, gear lever in park or neutral, and something else. 
I don't know what that is. Yes, it is. It's off. Oh, in progress. I hear clicks. Effective. Lovely. So I don't know what I've just done there, but it's done. Okay, yeah, so basically what I did before was um, I confirmed to the computer that the, the computer here, the laptop, confirmed that the car has an automatic gearbox, which it probably already knew. Um, but now I figured out how to reset the oil wear indicator and I've done that. So I've told it I've changed the oil. Apparently the ECU allows for the degradation of the oil condition when making its changes in the solenoid in the valve block. Um, so I've changed the oil, it's mostly changed now. So I've told it I've changed it. That might help it improve the shifts, but the gearbox does learn as, as you drive, um, how you're driving and it adapts its gear changes to suit you. So see how it drives basically, but um, it knows it's got new oil in now and I'm going to erase the fault codes and then I'm going to start the engine and put the right amount of oil in it. And then I'm going to try moving it through the levers and then I'm going to do the suspension before I go out because the suspension is wrong, but I'll talk about that in a minute. I'm uh, just taking the opportunity to go through some fault codes. Um, oh, that's a lot. So there's two, I imagine two, either two ECUs or two functions to the ECU or the suspension. Well, the suspension ECU had one fault code on it, which was just um, absence of signal of one of the front sensors, which is connected to the work I did the other day with the wishbones. Um, but there's another ECU for the AMVAR. Uh, AMVAR is a, it's actually something I think used on Peugeot's. It's this thing up here. And basically the spheres don't have a damping valve in them like old Citroens do. Very, very basic C6s do and C5s, but this doesn't, this has an open sphere with no damping in it, like the ones that were fitted to Meg. And um, it uses an electro valve here to modulate the size of the damping hole. It replicates it with a sliding valve. So you get variable damping, it's very clever stuff. And that ECU there, with all these faults on it, I'm not even gonna find out what these are. I'm hoping they're just spurious codes that have come up. So I'm gonna try and zap them all because things have been unplugged and played with, so it could just be that. I hope it says, it's saying resetting, please be patient. It's saying it's effective, and we find out if there's any remaining. Absence of faults. This is good. The suspension on this car is lovely. Um, the only one I'm having problems with so far is the injection because there's three codes with 10 on it there's three that are still there and it does run lumpy when it's cold sometimes so i've got a bit of a worry i've got some problems on the horizon there have i got anything out? look at all this stuff it's got there's ecus here for the spoiler parking sensors alarm passenger door there's a fault code logged on the passenger door for what it's still there look ah yes i know what that is that is the auto dipping rear mirror so when you put the car um in reverse the mirrors tilt downwards so you can see the curb which is quite clever um only that one doesn't it kind of does that and all then it does that and it gets all confused so i imagine this is that saying i don't know so i'm going to try and reset it and hopefully it will just stay away. I don't need the mirrors to dip, it's useful, but I'd rather have no dipping and no fault codes. Please go away. Oh dear, it has stayed. That's a bummer. There's obviously a problem in the actual mirror. Okay, so I've reset my codes, I've reset my oil indicator. Um, the next thing I need to do is do the suspension. Um, I mean, I need to get the gearbox bled in as well. I'll, I'll start the engine because I have to start the engine to do the suspension as well. Um, but um, I'll show you what that involves. It involves a special tool that looks like a teddy bear's table. See? I've stuck some pieces of tape to the uh, wheels. You'll see why in a minute. Uh, annoyingly, I've had to leave the engine running because the battery's so flat, it barely started. I need to take my table and um, show you what I do with it. 
all will make sense. There we go. There we go. It's a measuring device. So I measure from here, this point, down to the floor. That will tell me the radius of the wheel. I have to do this for all four wheels. You think, well, they're all the same size wheels. Why do you have to do it for all four? Because the car doesn't have 25% of its weight equally distributed. So the tyre will be compressed. Yes, I have done the tyre pressures. Um, the tyres will be compressed differently on all four corners. You'll be amazed the difference you can get. So I'm going to go around, measure these all, and write the measurements on the wheel. I'll need them in a minute. Uh, I pushed a button on the laptop and now the suspension has sunk. But I think that's normal. So I've measured all the radiuses, 325 there, but only 317 there. Um, unlike the last set of wheels it had on there, it's actually pretty even. 316 there and 325 on a near side rear. So. Obviously, the tyre uh, tread depth is the thing that makes the biggest difference to that. But these are, these are all fairly even compared to the last ones. Depressurising in progress has been for the last three minutes. But it's slammed. I hope it hasn't ground out on the ramp, actually. Oh, that would be annoying. don't think it has. No, it hasn't. It hasn't pushed the ramp down. That's good. So, yes, I'm just waiting now for it to say what it wants to do next, but it is decked, like proper decked. It's woken up. It's decided it's going to do something else. The pump is whirring, flattening the battery. That I've just spent ages charging with the engine. Now it's pressurising again. So any minute now, it should start raising. I think it's starting to lift at the back. Yeah. The front is uh, taking a bit more convincing. Yeah, the back's gone up. There goes the front, I think it's just started moving. Huh. Um. No, that's not quite right. Back's up, front's not. I'm sorry, why have we gone back to the beginning here? I've done the wrong thing. That wasn't the vehicle heights, was it? Yes, hello, it's me. Just a voice, not the person. Uh, reason for that, um, the microphone died. So I'm now having to do a voiceover many, many months later uh, and try and remember what it was I did. So uh, I'm sort of watching this footage and trying to commentate what it was I did, but I probably won't remember and I may end up saying something completely different so well we'll see how this goes this could be fun I've got myself a drink I'm sat in a uh, well a rather echoey office I've had a hellish day from work so let's see how this goes ah uh, yes okay so that is the screen uh, showing you where to measure the car height to the ground you've got two measurements you've got to put in uh, R, well, in this case, R1 and H1M. Uh, R1 is uh, the near side front wheel. R2 is the offside front wheel. R3, near side rear. R4, offside rear. Um, so the R measurement that it's asking for is the radius, which you've seen me uh, measuring with the little teddy bear's picnic table. Oh, look, I've got an SM. Um, you see me measuring that with a little teddy bear picnic table and I've got the measurements already um, for the radius but I also have to get the measurements under the car so I've got this straight edge here um, which I'm pointing to but you can't see that oh well I'm pointing to something else there we go um, 
Yeah, so that there is a machined flat surface um, on the bottom of the cast alloy subframe. And what I have to do is get a measurement um, between uh, the ground and that flat surface. Obviously, I'm not going to measure it down to the ground because the car's about a meter and a half up in the air, uh, probably a little bit more. So that would be wrong. Uh, so what I've actually got is I've got that straight edge there, that silver thing. Putting that across the ramps actually works quite well because it means you've got a completely flat floor. So the measurements are actually more accurate than doing it on the ground. You could do this on the ground, but it would be a, it'd be a bind. So there we go, measuring that. Um, I don't know what that red light was. That wasn't anything fancy, a laser or anything. It was probably just a reflection of the camera. Oh, look, the imp. Um, so, yeah, I've measured that. So that's it tells you where the thing is, the measuring thing on the computer. Either so it wants the... Right, so putting in the radius, which on that was uh, 316. And then it'll ask me for the H1M. So H1M is near side front. The measurement underneath, there you go, is 141 mil. That's too low. It shouldn't be that low. Now it's asking me to go to the other side. So go to the other side then. Come on. Jesus, come on. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, don't. That's my secret. Oh. See, I can't read French. I've just got a trick app on the phone. Um, so it's looking for R2 and H2M now. So it's exactly the same thing, just on the offside front. I, I have the... I've done all the radiuses already. Radi I. Uh, 317 mil in it goes and now I'm now I'm prattling around with something oh I'm moving we're we going for a walk what are we doing oh I nearly knocked it off yeah I don't yeah I don't want that to fall off halfway through that would probably not be good um, and I'd met at this point I've measured clearly I haven't filmed it but I've measured the uh, H reading on the offside and now it's gonna ask me to go to the near side rear so of course there are two um machine surfaces on the rear subframe as well and uh yeah so so i'm just enjoying a beer while i'm watching this um oh there's me that's my eyes i can read french um yeah so near side rear machine flat surface up on subframe again uh i'm looking for it here but i'm not showing you where it is there we go that's it I forget if it's the step down one or the stepped up one. Yeah. But that's the rear one. So same again, straight edge across the ramps, measure the distance from that machine surface down to the bottom of the straight edge. Like so. I don't know what I'm, I'm moving around. Oh, my. Okay. Right, I'll put the camera down. That's good. Right, there we go. Um, so there's the measurement. 214. Rover. Um, so that's the measurement gone in there. And then... The radius. Only the radius. Oh, I must have already put the radius in. Oh, I've done it all. There we go. That was the other side. I've skipped. Right, so now it's uh, taking those measurements... Let's go now. Let's read French and see what it's actually saying. Uh, vehicle height learning control procedure, right? So yeah, so it's taken those measurements. I've told it how high the car actually is, and then I think what it's going to get me to do is compress the suspension. The control procedure. Oh, I don't even bloody read that. Okay. Uh, something about pneumatics. And the front. I think I can press the front suspension. Oh, for God's sake. I can't even read that. Making the contacts, I think that says. I didn't need that. I'll put the contact. I don't know what put the contact means. There we go. Exert pressure. I think that's what that is. Right, apply pressure to the front of the vehicle. So what I have to do now is pull the suspension down. And hang off it, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do monkey bars on it. I'm not really, because uh, I'm too lazy for that. I figure that it's actually easier just to hang as opposed to lift your legs off the ground. Um, there I am. Them trousers are well cool. I can't remember where they come from. Little, I think. Um, so basically, I'm going to hang on it and compress the suspension. And then the car 
is going to lift me up again. You won't be able to see it, probably. That's what I'm explaining now, see? With my... I'm gesticulating. So, yeah, I've already explained. Come on. There we go. Right, hanging on it. So it's compressed the suspension. And now, very faintly, you can see it's lift, it lifted back up. Then I let go. Then the car shot up in the air. And then tried to return back down to where it thinks it should be. And then I have to do the same on the back again. Uh, sorry, the same on the back as what I've just done on the front. When eventually... When, here we go. Um, so I'm going to do the same on the back. Obviously hang on something that's part of the body, not the suspension, because that would be dumb. There we go. So I'm going to... There we go. Suspension compressed. There it goes. It's just lifted it back up. And then I'm going to let go, and now it's shot up a bit higher, and then it will come down again. It might have already done it. Right, it must have done. And then it'll ask me to make the measurements again. So I'll, the radiuses haven't really changed, um, but the heights under the car, the H readings, may well have done. That one does. I think that's changed by about four or five mil. So what I'll do, this is kind of corner weighting, um, it's Citroen style. So, yeah, I think it just sorted itself out. So basically, you give it all these figures, and then, um, and there's me explaining it. Um, you give it all these figures, and then it works out where it thinks it should be, and you've told it where it actually is. Oh, I'm, whoa. Going, wow, okay. Um, yeah, that was boring, obviously. Uh, yeah, so it works out where it should be and then lifts itself back up and then you tell it where it actually is and if the car's happy it's done the right thing if it thinks it did good then um it leaves it if it thinks it did bad uh, then it readjusts its height until it is right but basically I've, I've told it where the ground is now so yeah that's uh that, that's pretty much it the, the thing is when i put those new wishbone bushes in and change the geometry of the front wishbones uh, the front of the car sat way too low so that it could be uh, well that would be because the position of the ball joint was slightly different because the arm position was very slightly different um so yeah now it's back to where it should be and i'm just explaining it but i'm doing it probably quite a long-winded way uh don't think i mean i might have missed something important here Basically, they were trying to make the car ride properly and stop, but here we go. Hey, right, well, the uh, mic's died, so this is me out loud. I was going to hook up the camera, take this thing out, go for a test drive, but once again, I've run out of time. Uh, I've got somewhere to be, or had somewhere to be about half an hour ago. Um, I don't think we fixed it, which is kind of a bit disappointing. Well, I'm gutted, actually, but I don't think the gearbox is sorted. Um... To, I, I checked off the oil level now and I would have filmed that and everything but I just got into a bit of a funk because I realised that I think well, after all this work it's no different um, but I'm cycling through the gears to get the oil around the gearbox and everything like that, get the level topped off got the level sorted so the level is now uh, pretty good um, but when I was moving through the gears it was clunking and banging just like it used to no different in fact exactly as it used to so unless by some miracle uh, it's just going through a learning phase and it will improve as the new oil circulates or by some massive coincidence the valve lock I put in it is exactly as broken as the old one I mean exactly as worn it's suggesting that there's something else wrong it could be the ECU that would be annoying because I could have changed the ECU and I changed the valve lock but I didn't because I wasn't sure if they were coded to the car or not so I don't want to risk it um, Hindsight. Well, I didn't have enough time. Again, I'm doing everything in a rush. Um, didn't have enough time to go and you know, research and see if they are coded. So that's had to stay as it is for now. So it could be the ECU, but I think it's more likely it's going to be the gearbox itself. So maybe one of the clutches or a couple of the clutches. Um, it seems to be reverse and third. So if they share, a, they might be in the same sequence. I'll have to have a look. Yeah, gutted. Gutted. So... Hopefully, I mean, if I keep the fingers crossed, I'm not even going to try doing it. There might be some chance that it sorts itself out, but I'm really not convinced. So, uh, 
<sighs> yeah, after all that work, I'm pretty bummed out about it. So I'm going to head off and watch some football, try and forget about it. And um, see you in another video, maybe. But maybe not with that, not for a while. I'm angry at that now.